Thanks for staying with us. Unfortunately, our guests couldn't stay with us. We had to move on to another topic. Uh, but we'll definitely tr um, treat it and see as, as uh, matters unfold. Um, now, if you recall, the CBN had res restricted the availability of foreign exchange to the importation of 43 items uh, about eight years ago. But last week, the Central Bank of Nigeria announced that it has restored the 43 items prohibited from access to the foreign exchange. Now, um, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I mean... Now, on this one, Pim, Misha, you know, you know, I started selling rice because, you know, they had closed the borders mm -hmm. against rice smuggling, and I do not subscribe to foreign rice. I believe that local rice should be what we consume. Also, this is apart from the economical issues with, um, side of it, the health is, um, issues that comes with the over-processed foreign rice and over-preserved foreign rice stock in the warehouses across our border country, our neighbor countries, uh, you know, what they bring into the country and we are made to consume them. I had bought one in 2015 and fell sick from consuming that rice. When I tested it, I noticed that it doesn't even have a um, good shelf life compared to the village rice that was sent to me from Aochi that I was consuming that was, I felt better when I, I ate it. And so I converted completely and swore off for your rice. So I started to distribute it because I was in, enjoying it myself. Mm -hmm. Every other person was not enjoying it. In 2019, when the border was closed, I decided to start the business. But this, what we are suffering right now as rice uh, distributors or even rice producers, is on, on uh, you know, it's difficult to mention. As I'm coming to work in the morning now, <laughs> I see the Okadas, I see bringing the buses in. bringing in rice from Koton. They travel with me all the way inwards Lagos. And I'm waiting to for prices to drop so we can go back to production, struggling with it. I didn't think that this was going to happen. But do you think it was like counterproductive, though? Because the objective... That's from a producer and a distributor's point of view. That's how I feel about this. Mm. So what are your thoughts on this, on this recent um, policy? So, um, you know, um, policies... And I'm, we're looking forward to the FEC meeting taking place today. Um, we're hoping that there would be reconsideration of some of the policies that we are... Because we've seen that this administration tends to listen and take in feedback, review and readdress situation. And we're hoping this is one of those situations that will be reviewed and addressed. Because we understand that as a nation, we must, as much as possible, reduce our importation to the barest minimum, especially for our daily. But Tokwe, there's an argument, which I would like you to, uh, I'd like you to think about a bit. There's an argument that one of the reasons why we're having this dollar scarcity, mm. aside from these jeeps that they're buying, that there are people who are importing and demanding dollars. Mm. So the fact is that what, what the, 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 somebody told us on, on, uh, a few weeks ago that the real value of dollar is about between 650 to 700. But these, these guys who are illegally smuggling this for the, the, for the three items into Nigeria and bringing it to Nigeria are demanding dollar. And they're also, and that's causing the weakening of the Naira. But now that CBN has said, come to me for the dollar. You don't have to go to the black market because they're the ones, by them going to the black market to get the dollar, it's causing this problem we're having. CBN is now saying, come to me for the dollar. Don't go to black market to get wouldn't that help? Now, of course, there are concerns that it will affect local production. But do you yes. think it's an opportunity to actually for local producers to actually compete with those coming in? So I get the CBN policy because I've taken the story several times. I'm always reading all the economic stories. So the, the, um, um, what, the people that were talking about the challenges with dollars said that the reason we're having only poor um, exchange rates, that it's so far from the official one, is because a lot of things were not available um, in the R&E window. Yeah. That was, that was one of the reasons they gave. And so people were having to go to the parallel market yes. to access. And because of the pressure on parallel market, people are not, um, yeah. there, there's a difference. So yeah, I get that part yeah. that we need to make it, if you are deregulating, deregulate Across very well. Let it be 100%. Let it be free for all in the market forces. But when you're trying to preserve your economy and you want to encourage local production, when you deregulate like that, give everybody access, we also must now create incentives for local production. That's, yes, that's, that's which, which is there, mm. which exists. So in, cre in creating incentives for local production yes. and talking about it over and over again, because that's why I took the stories I took today, because people will not know that these are opportunities available for you. So when we take the stories, people follow up, yes. access if for you that you are doing rice. President has said that you will get fertilizers. President said that they would provide... Um, yes. So uh, there are incentives. So we take advantage of those incentives, make it accessible to everyone interested, then we'll see more development yeah. happening within the economy. So I guess for me it will be uh, policies mm -hmm. back and forth. We have people who are investing based on policies, you know, and so, you know, and this discourages, in, you know, future investments. 
it's because of this yo-yoing of policies that some people have closed shop here in Nigerian markets and have gone away. Some people have lost their livelihood because of it. Um, and so I know that with this particular administration, they are trying to do all that they can, you know, to sort of unify the um, currency and things like that. But because everything works, you know, alongside this policy will affect something else, so many things have to be put in place. Um, as we already mentioned, local production is um, to, you know, the support of local production is important. But then we also know that in Nigeria, there's one thing about policy and then it's very different from how it is implemented. Mm. We know how it's supposed to look in theory and on paper. I don't know how it may eventually look in reality when we finally execute and, you know, these policies. I hope that um, this administration can have can really sit down and think through, you know, in depthly before we find before we put a policy out. You know, let us even take some time because um, with this administration, we've seen a lot of going back because you know mm. Nigerians are speaking and back and forth. So we are already in a hole. Can we just make sure that we're doing the right thing going forward for Nigeria? Also, well, can Nigerians also, you know, I always, I always, I always bring this conversation back to us. Mm -hmm. Can Nigerians also choose Nigerians? So yes, Nima is allowed to import whatever she wants to import. But if I choose to buy Tokwe mm. and say, I'm not going to buy that spaghetti or whatever, that Singaporean rice, I'm not going to buy those, I will choose the Nigerian. If we make a conscious effort to buy Nigerian, because the only reason why you're bringing in Singaporean rice is because there's a buyer for Singaporean rice. Yes, but that's well, why I was saying I was... that everything, it has to work hand in hand. Yeah. So These things are sold in open markets. Yeah. What happened at the customs? Why is that not, why are they not stopping importation, um, smuggling? So that's that's, 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 no, so no, they're no, no, that's that way. Down that then, because they're, allowed, they're not allowed to no, bring no, it in. We, we started to experience rise in the local price of rice because borders were reopened. Yeah. And so now you now have people not necessarily smuggling. They just bring it in. Pay this is just last week we talk about oh, the No, no, no. That's for the dollar. Okay. Opening of the dollar. But but the, for the three the items. Borders have been reopened for some goods, some goods items. And so we just saw the price of Local price of rice, I would have to sell at 50000 to make a profit, to ease out. Because when I went on the break, I left my store with a 38000 naira bag. <laughs> and I left the store because I couldn't even do anything. And by the time I got back to store, I'd lost 10000 per bag. Because we were selling 38 and it was already 48 at the K2 market where I usually used to grade the prices. And I continued to sell, trying to scale up. Okay, sell it at 42. I will find a way. So but we've money. lost a large amount of my investment. What we are trying to do now, where will you get the money? You have to go and refinance. When you do that, the farmer in the market, in the farm, does not, has not experienced anything. All the farmer borrowers, he didn't do anything. What he did was have the prices continue to go up. So I'm wondering now, if you allow this price rice come, because then Nigerians were still going through hell and back to buy the foreign rice mm. because of their tastes. Only a few people who thought it was health wise are still invading the shop, insisting I go, continue producing. And when you come like that, you, you are insisting, take the money. If you open it for them, take the money, reinvest deliberately. Let it reach every single farmer so that if I'm buying paddy, I'm not running my head upside down buying it. And the CNG buses should come. So that I'm not paying 3000 naira per bag sitting all the way from farm back to okay. Lagos. Let me you know, those are the costs that we are looking at. Let me take this call, call um, Wale from Agbara. Thanks for calling. Yes. I'm first time caller. Welcome to the Welcome show. To the show. Mm -hmm. All right. My concern is that, you know, we in Nigeria, we like to take advantage of each other. Now, we stop foreign rice because of local production. And the local production is now high. So now, I think what the government is trying to do, when there's competition in the market, so let there be competition. Cement is part of it. Recently, we had a uh, program of to reduce cement to 35. What is happening to Dango T2? So if people are importing it, though it's about the local production, then there will be more competition. Nigeria are in pain. People are taking advantage of each other. So that's our contribution. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I now, so feel sorry poultry. Who have, you know, invested in these businesses and now we have mm -hmm. that. So now, you know, some of the things I'm looking at tomato paste. Yeah. Soap. Poultry. And I've seen a lot of Nigerians in the it's past in four years somewhere. put in a lot of work and investment in this particular these yeah. two industries. And now we're going to have that. But well, you see, interestingly, look up. So soap has never left. 
If you, have you come to trade fair recently? Mm. For years, in the past eight years, it was bad. But there is still coming, there's banned. But we're still coming in. If you go to trade fair, you still see so, all the so contraband. That's so the point is, so it's all contraband. Even if you go to the stores, some of them are still there. Now that they're chasing down a contraband, they're still there. So what CBN is saying that instead of you bringing it illegally and going to black market, cuckoo open door, let them because come in. They because they're already there. Their own so so, so they're, they're, they're currently still competing. Industry. The Nigerian so, so are still do. competing. Since, since we have opportunity to just give a bit of. Um, Consider advice. If we make it, if we bring it in, you can bring it in. Mm. Um, two things. Number one is we can increase tariffs on those particular exactly. items. So it's is, done. It's highly, heavily taxed. Yes. So that now if you are it state discourages. State. So if you are coming in, it becomes it becomes so expensive that the local ones are able to uh, right. the prices yes. right. Number one. Number two. The borders are very porous. People get things into this country that are banned, and we see them everywhere. So if we really want to protect ourselves, we need to, our borders need to be properly manned. Yeah. And our people need to understand the impact of their disloyalty. Because I don't believe that it is possible for this quantum of banned goods to find their way into Nigerian markets without, without <laughs> authorities knowing about it. So there's a bit of compromise. It's not about letting them, uh, punishing all the people that have compromised Nigeria. You should understand that your, what your compromise is doing is killing People's businesses is mm. hurting people from being able to also. invest and is leading to many people jackpine because they've shut down their businesses. So, so in the meantime, the manufacturing industry, what do we do? Give them loan. Give them so loan electricity and give them power. Let me let's give them the this call, Adekunle. Adekunle is calling. Thanks for calling Adekunle alive. So they get power to do what they need to Hello. do. Yeah, good morning. Morning. Yeah, I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I want to say that the CBN, they are aligned by allowing the particular items to come. Because whereby, if you say, look at, look at the Buhari administration that uh, spent so much on farmers, give them fertilizer using the, the taxpayers' money to finance it. And after that, after doing that, they were not, they were not uh, good enough to, to buy it off from the farmer and sell it to the public. They allowed the farmer to take advantage of it okay. you know, because they have closed the border. The farmers took advantage of people thereby making the cost of the of the rising go so much so high. So there was no control and government financed mm -hmm. most of these things. Now there was no control. Now when the price is so bad, government is doing the other way to make it come down. Because if you fin if you open up the border, at least there will be competition, then people will buy with their and it will fall down the price. That is the objective of government by opening the border, which is, which I think is right. So that is a, that is my contribution. Thank you very much. The last caller said it's because farmers took advantage of people that, you know, we have to proliferate our market with foreign goods. But that's not true. Or not, it's not entirely true. Okay. Better. Yes, let's just put it in proper so that they don't say I'm generalizing. It's not entirely true. Farmers had to, under the last administration, deal with a lot of taxing, uncaptured by paying uh, on the sea, pay, pay, paying uh, on, the, uh, on our rivers to uh, bandits. Mm -hmm. You go to farms, they pay bandits. You come back, you pay bandits. Then the cost of fuel went up. Yeah. Transportation, the roads are terrible. Very. There's a video that trended over the weekend, uh, during the, the week, of a person who went to buy vegetables from the north. And by the time he opened the bags in Lagos, everything had, uh, had, uh, had uh, right. deteriorated. It, uh, it was perished mm -hmm. in the bags. And he was opening them. And that video is the reality of you. Nigerian farmers right now. You get to market, you have to pay from one shop to the other for you to be able to get your goods into the shop. The reality out there is stronger than what any lawmaker sitting in the office, uh, put, uh, 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 executive member putting policies they don't relate with, they don't understand. Go to the farmer and ask them what their problem is. What concerns farmer with dollar rates? Is it not because of this dollar rate everything is going sk skyrocketing? Mm. If you're intervening, inter intervene and give them <sighs> things that will reach them. When you are coming from Kebi with Paddy, you want to cross to, 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 to be that you know what's in your eye go see on the water. You pay bandits per boat or they capsize your boat mm -hmm. with goods. That's the reality. And we cannot continue to put our mouth inside this. Well, that's for rice. Rice is not the only thing <laughs> yeah. on this yeah. side. Yeah. Let's so, not make, <coughs> let me not make it a problem. No, 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 no. The reality what is affects there. Yeah. This is you, because you, this is your you have personal experience. For those that are into vegetables and um, perishables, they have their own. That, that's a very yeah, valid story, too. The road being bad contributes to it. So we, we, the issues are multifaceted. Um, but we know that if we don't encourage local production and we continue to import, we would always have the problem of dollar dependence economy. We know and that, that would not, that, that's just, because this is just sorting out the small, small branches mm -hmm. of the real problem. The roots 
that would bring forth the right fruits mm -hmm. is for us to ensure that production locally yeah. is affordable well, see, and is encouraged. Well, but in the last eight years, how, produc how productive were we? Yes, yeah, some, some, some industries came about. Yes. Maybe. But the truth is that many came, but we haven't even as flourished as we should have. Yes. So, so, so what caused it is what we should so be looking at. Well, there are, many, there are many factors. Yeah. We'll never take away the Nigerian factor where you were getting incentives from the bank and you would not put the money where you are meant to. Or you won't pay back. back. You won't pay back. So that's one. But also, let us look at the state of the country. Without power, what can you really do? With insecurity, what can you really do? You know, yes. there's so many things that are on ground that those have to be fixed. This um, one day we are banning and unbanning is just for me as, as far as I'm concerned, it's just the surface. We need to do with serious the the serious issues on ground we i don't think as a country and as an economy we would ever develop if we don't have a thriving local manufacturing um, industry we yeah. have to do everything that is needed and then put in place um you know measures to make sure that people do not take advantage of the incentives mm -hmm. that government gives them okay I think we need to wrap up on this, but I think generally um, it's a conversation. Experts, I was trying to read some of the comments some experts have said. Some of them, many of them have actually uh, praised the government on this, saying that it's a welcome development. Yes. However, but they also uh, encourage, they, 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 they emphasize the importance of not suppressing local production. Um, there was somebody I was going to quote here. Um, I think is okay, our friend Muta Muda Yusu, the chief executive officer of the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, that's CPPE was saying that he welcomes the decision of CBN to discontinue the forex exclusion policy on the 43 items. It is, it is a move in the right direction. Um, the expulsion of the 43 items was one of the several drivers of distortions in the forex window. Um, the exclusion of the items also contributed to the persistent divergence in rates between the official window and the, um, the parallel markets. So the exclusion was good. However, he was saying that government must ensure that the local products producers, marketers don't, manufacturers don't suffer. The fiscal authorities should continually monitor the economic landscape to, 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 um, to shape the character of fiscal policy measures to regulate imports in line with comparative advantage principles. We need to worry about the risk of an import surge, which is what you said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the need to upscale the use of fiscal policy measures to boost economic, domestic production and productivity. So it has to be done yeah. um, simultaneously in the balance, balance it properly. That is all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.